honor for me to write the World Theatre Day 2020 message. It is a most humbling feeling, but it is also an exciting thought that Pakistani theatre and Pakistan itself has been recognized by the ITI, the most influential and representative world theatre body of our times. This honor is also a tribute to Madiha Gohar, theatre icon and a Joka theatre founder, also my life partner, who passed away two years ago. The Joka team has come a long, hard way, literally from street to theatre. But that is the story of many a theatre group, I'm sure. It is never easy and smooth sailing. It is always a struggle. I come from a predominantly Muslim country that has seen several military dictatorships, the horrible onslaught of religious extremists, and three wars with the neighboring India, with whom we share thousands of years of history and heritage. Today, we all live in a fear of a full blown out war with our twin brother, our neighbor, even a nuclear war, because now both the countries have nuclear weapons. We sometimes say in jest, in bad times, theater is really good because there's a dearth of challenges to be faced, contradictions to be exposed and status quo to be subverted. My theater group Ajoka and I have been walking this line for 36 years now. It has indeed been a tightrope to maintain the balance between entertainment and education, between searching and learning from the past and preparing for the future, between creative free expression and adventurous showdowns to authority, between socially critical and financially viable theatre between reaching out to the masses and being avant-garde. One may even say that a theater maker has to be a conjurer, a magician. In Pakistan, a clear division exists between the profane and the sacred. For the profane, there is no room for religious questioning, while for the sacred, there is no possibility for open debate or new ideas. In fact, the conservative establishment considers the art and culture out of their bounds for their sacred games. So the playing field for the performing artists has always been like a huggies race. They first need to prove their credentials as good citizens, as a good Muslim, as a compliant citizen, and then trying to establish that art, dance and music are allowed in Islam. Therefore, a number of observant Muslims have been reluctant to embrace the performing arts, even though art, dance and theatre are embedded in their daily lives. And then, then we stumble on a subculture which has the potential to bring the profane and the sacred on the same stage. During the military rule in Pakistan in the 1980s, Ajoka was launched by a group of young artists who challenged the dictatorship through a socially and politically bold theatre of dissent. They found that their feelings, their anger, their anguish was so amazingly expressed by a Sufi bard who lived some 300 years ago. This was the great Sufi poet Bulesh Shah. Ajoka found it could make politically explosive statements through his poetry, challenging corrupt political authority and bigoted religious establishment. The authorities could ban or banish us, but not a revered and popular Sufi poet like Bulesha. We discovered that his life was as dramatic and radical as his poetry, which had earned him fatwas and banishment in his lifetime. I then wrote Bulha, a play about Bulesha's life and struggle. Bulha, as he is lovingly referred to by the masses across South Asia, first was from a tradition of Punjabi Sufi poets who fearlessly challenged the authority of the emperors and the clerical demagogues through their poetry and practice. 
they wrote in the language of the people and about the aspiration of the masses. In music and dance, they found the vehicles to achieve a direct association between man and God. By passing with disdain, the exploitative religious middlemen. They defied gender and class divide and looked at the planet with wonder as a manifestation of the Almighty. The Arts Council of Lahore rejected the script on the grounds that it was not a play, but merely a biography. However, when the play was performed at an alternative venue, the Goethe Institute, the audience saw, understood and appreciated the symbolism in the life and poetry of the people's poet. They could fully identify with his life and times and see the parallels with their own lives and times. A new kind of theatre was born that day in 2001. Devotional Kawali music, Sufi Dhamal dancing and inspirational poetry recitation, even the meditative Zikir chanting became parts of the play. A group of six who were attending a Punjabi conference and had popped in to see the play invaded the stage in the end hugging and kissing the actors and crying. They were sharing the stage for the first time with Muslim Punjabis after the partition of India in 1947, which resulted in the division of Punjab on communal lines. Bulle Shah had been as dear to them as he was to Muslim Punjabis, for Sufis transcend religious or communal divides. The memorable premiere was followed by Bulesha's Indian Odyssey, starting with a trailblazing tour of the Indian part of Punjab. Bulla was performed at length and breadth of India, even in times of gravest tensions between the two countries and in places where the audience did not know a single word of Punjabi, loved every moment of it. While the doors of political dialogue and diplomacy were being closed one by one, the doors of theatre halls and the hearts of Indian audience remained wide open. During the Ajoka tour of Indian Punjab in 2004, after a very warmly received performance before a rural audience of thousands, an old man came to the actor playing the role of the great Sufi. He said, My grandson is very unwell. Would you please blow a blessing upon him? The actor playing this role was taken aback. He said, Babaji, I am not Bulesha. I am just an actor playing this role. The man started crying and said, Please, bless my grandson. I know that he will recover if you do. We suggested to the actor to grant the old man his wish. The actor blew a blessing upon the young boy. The old man was satisfied. Before leaving, he said, Son, you are not an actor. You are a reincarnation of Bulesha. His avatar, he said. Suddenly, the whole new concept of acting, of theatre, dawned upon us where the actor turns into the reincarnation of the character he or she is portraying. In the 18 years of touring with Bulla, we have noticed a similar response from an apparently uninitiated audience, for whom the performance is just not an entertaining or an intellectually stimulating experience, but a soul-stirring spiritual encounter. In fact, the actor playing the role of Malaysia's Sufi master was so profoundly influenced by the experience that he himself became a Sufi poet and has since published two collections of poems. 
the performers involved in the production have shared when the performance starts they feel that the spirit of bolisha is among them and the state seems to have been elevated to a higher plane an indian scholar when writing about the play gave it the title when theater becomes a shrine i am a secular person and my interest in sufism is mainly cultural i am more interested in the performative and artistic aspects of punjabi sufi poets but my audience who may not be extremist or bigoted but may hold sincere religious beliefs exploring stories such as that of bulle shah and there so many in all cultures can become a bridge between us the theater makers and unacquainted but enthusiastic audience together we can discover the spiritual dimensions of theater and build bridges between the past and present leading to a future which is the destiny of all communities believers and non believers actors and old ones and their grandsons the reason why i'm sharing the story of bulesha and our explorations of a kind of sufi theater is that while performing on stage uh, we sometimes get carried away by our philosophy of theater our role as harbingers of social change and in doing so we leave a large section of the masses behind in uh, our engagement with the challenges of the present we deprive ourselves of the possibilities of a deeply moving spiritual experience which theater can provide in today's world where by godry hate and violence is on the rise once again nations seem to be pitted against nations believers are fighting with believers and communities are spewing hatred against other communities and in the meanwhile children die of malnutrition mothers during childbirth due to the lack of timely medical care and ideologies of of uh, hate flourish our planet is plunging deeper and deeper into a climatic catastrophe and one can hear the hoof beats of the horses of the four horsemen of the apocalypse we need to replenish our spiritual strength we need to fight apathy lethargy pessimism greed and disregard for the world we live in the planet we live on theater has a role a noble role in uh energizing and mobilizing humanity uh, to lift itself from its descent into the abyss it can uplift the stage the performance space into something sacred in south asia when the artists touch the reverence of the floor of the stage before stepping on onto it an ancient tradition when the spiritual and the cultural were intertwined and it's time to regain that symbiotic relationship between the artist and the audience the past and the future theater making can be a sacred act and actors indeed can become the avatars of the roles they play theater elevates the art of acting to a higher spiritual plane theater has the potential of becoming a shrine and the shrine a performing space